welcome to the Fossil Huntress podcast. Today on the show, I'm going to take you all the way over to the west coast of Canada. Just off the coast of British Columbia is Vancouver Island. And if we go up Vancouver Island to the Comox Basin, we're going to explore the Trent River, which is a wonderful place to explore. And I'll take you on a excavation of a marine reptile that we did this past summer. So the rocks we're going to be exploring on the Trent were laid down south of the equator as small tropical islands and they rode along the Pacific Plate heading north and slightly east over the past 85 million years to where we find them today. Trent River is a wonderful place to explore. It's got some interesting geology, a mix of terrestrial and marine fossils and fauna. Um, but even without the fossil fauna, it is a wonderful place to explore. And families come here to walk up Ammonite Alley and look at the rocks and geologic formations, the beautiful waterfalls. We've got modern trees here, big leaf maples, devil's club, um, opportunistic red alder, and beautiful moss growing on the sides of the trees, so it's idyllic in its own right in modern day. And I like to swim in the pools. The rocks here are a bit slippery, so for today's field trip, I've brought you some uh, water stockings, so the, the runners that you can get wet that have pretty good grip, and you've got a tasty est wing and a chisel and some good eye protection to keep you safe. To discover what we can find on the Trent River takes only a wee stroll and a bit of digging and a bit of time to put all those pieces together. The first geological forays on the on Vancouver Island and on the Trent weren't uh, to look for paleo deposits or fossils, they were to look for coal deposits. So the profitable remains of ancient forests that could be burned to power industry. And it was Jim Munger and Charlie Ross of the Geologic Survey of Canada who both worked to further our knowledge of the complex geology of the Comox Basin. So they were at the cutting edge of West Coast geology back in the 70s. And it was much of their work that helped tease out how and where the rocks we see along the Trent today were formed and made their way north. So we know that by about 85 million years ago, the insular subterrane belt had made its way to what is now British Columbia. And the land was forested, much as they are now, but by extinct genera and families of trees. The fossils we find are trees similar to oak, poplar, maple, and ash, and these can all be found as fossils along the Trent River. We also start to see the lovely remains of flowering plants like figs and breadfruit. As we head up the river, we come to the contact zone. We find the dark gray marine shales and mudstones of the Haslam snug up against the sandstones of the Comox Formation. The Trent is quite a wonderful place to collect. So we've got those amazing terrestrial specimens. We've got um, trees and flowering plants. And we also have amazing um, marine specimens. So if you walk up the Trent to the River Falls, the infamous Ammonite Alley, we can find Mesopozoia here and Kitchenites. These are lovely Upper Cretaceous uh, Santonian um, ammonites found in the Haslam Formation. We also come across the Polytychiceris zone. So if a paperclip and an ammonite had a baby, that's what you're looking at. So these are big heteromorph ammonites and they're quite stunning. I'll do up a post in them because they're very interesting. One of their specimens um, was on the BCPA, the British Columbia Paleo Alliance calendar in 2003. So I, I have that photo and I'll share it with you. If we continue west along the river, we come to two fossil turtle sites. Yes, fossil turtles. And one of them is marine and one of them is terrestrial. The other interesting species we found here are ratfish. And this past August, so August of 2020, we excavated a big marine reptile. Well, not a big marine reptile, bigger than the other fossils we find here, but he would have been a juvenile. So I will share that with you as well. There have been so many wonderful finds found on the Trent River. It's a regular site for the Vancouver Island Paleontological Society to lead field trips and same with the Courtney Museum. So we've found beautiful ammonites and various heteromorphs and other marine goodies, terrestrial goodies. 
but two of the most significant finds have been found discontinuous in time, but connected in that they were found by two brothers. So about 14 years ago, Mike Trask, and you'll recall he's the same fellow who found the Courtney Elasmosaur on the Puntledge River, he found a collection of caudal vertebrae, and we didn't really know, we knew that they were articulated bones, but they hadn't been prepped at this point, so we couldn't really see what we were looking at, and it was assumed for the longest time that they were uh, marine reptile bones. And then we had a chance to prep them out, and David Evans is going to be publishing on them. He did a little presentation at the 2018 BCPA Symposium in Courtney, but since that time, they've been prepped lovingly, and we now know that they're a hadrosaur, a duck-billed dinosaur. So that's a very significant find in the Upper Cretaceous Nanaimo group, uh, a first for BC, so significant all around. And then since that time, and over the last couple years, we've been finding little bits and pieces of another mighty marine reptile, uh, so the hadrosaur is terrestrial, and this is now a marine find. And this was done by Pat's, or by Mike's brother, Pat Trask, from the uh, Courtney Museum. So this past August, August 2020, there was an excavation on the Trent River, which was the end and the culmination of a three-year paleontological puzzle. So the fossil remains were those of a plesiosaur. So they're a group of long-necked marine reptiles that are found from the late Triassic to the late Cretaceous, so some 215 to 80 million years ago. And in the case of the Trent River, it's closer to 85 million years old. So this was a big marine reptile that would have been swimming in our ancient oceans 85 million years ago. So this plesiosaur fossil was excavated high up on a cliff on the, alongside the Trent River, and it took about a month of work with planning, scaffolding, climbing gear, a team of dedicated souls, most of them from the Vancouver Island Paleo Society, and some bits and pieces of paper as well, so some permitting and um, uh, privilege to be able to excavate this mighty beast. We've been finding bits and pieces of him eroding out, eroding out of the cliffside for years. So little bits and pieces that provided clues, but at no point, the, Tr the Trent River is quite long and it was hard to figure out where the material was coming from. So the Courtney Museum hosts regular fossil field trips here and they're led by Pat Trask, Mike Trask's brother. And on one of those fossil field trips back in about 2017, Pat was leading a family and one of the field trip participants picked up a marine reptile finger bone. It was just laying in the river having eroded out from the nearby cliff and she showed it to Pat and he immediately recognized it as being diagnostic. It definitely belonged to a marine reptile, possibly an elasmosaur, but what species and just where it came from on the river or where it had eroded out was still a bit of a mystery. And so she kindly donated it to the museum and for a time that was that. Then again in 2018, another piece of this paleontological puzzle was revealed. So Pat was leading yet another Courtney Museum fossil field trip on the Trent River when one of the participants showed him a specimen that looked like a really tiny hockey puck, a little disc. And this second find was of a wrist bone. And again, possibly from an elasmosaur, but hard, hard to know for sure. And contemplating out loud where this material could be coming from, Pat looked down and found a vertebra in the water below his feet. He put the bones in the lab at the museum and he was intrigued by their origin. So he began looking up and down the river in his off hours to see where they might be coming from and thinking about the erosion that occurs on the Trent. In 2018, he came down and started really looking and he could see a ledge along the river where eroded material might gather. Once he checked, he found a crack and when he cleaned out all the rock and gathered them up, he found more than a dozen bones of a marine reptile. We still didn't know where it was coming from, but we knew it was there. And so Pat and members of the VIPS started to climb the cliff faces or rappel down from above. Jason Hawley did a lot of rappelling and he was 
just a few feet from the actual site, but it was really hard to pick out. In order to really see the fossil site up the cliff, you really needed to have the right angle of sun and be looking at it in just the right way for it to show. So Pat had a friend fly a drone all along the cliffs and that turned up nothing. And so at the beginning of August, Pat, or this August, this past August 2020, Pat was back on the river in the morning with a family and said to one of the kids, hey, let's go look and find a baby elasmosaur. And they walked right over and saw a neck bone and or tailbone in the river. And he knew that it, Pat knew it hadn't been there the day before. And so he looked up and thought, ah, this must be coming from right up here, so directly above him. So he came back a day later in the day and he set up a telescope on the river aimed at the likely portion of the cliff and bingo, he could see a bone sticking out. So the next day, Pat came back down to the river with his brother, Mike, and Mike who'd found that elasmosaur. So they were both keen beans and they had a good eye for finding fossil bone. So Pat showed the section of the cliff he was thinking of and said, you know, here's my target. And he took a long pole and hit a little piece, maybe three inches by three inches. And when it fell down, it had bones in it. So they knew that they'd nailed it. They'd found the exact site. So together they began planning a larger excavation. So that would include scaffolding and planning and safety and climbing gear and permits. They got the van P or the VIPS involved. And so they built a scaffolding platform and ran some rope so that they would be safe. I'd given um, Mike a big five gallon bucket last year. So they attached a rope to it so they could haul their tools up the cliff side. Initially, they thought it would just be a small amount of uh, fossil material, maybe a few finger bones. But over the past uh, few um, weeks, over the, over the weeks of July, they began finding more and more material until they realized that they probably had at least half a complete marine reptile. And the beauty of this find is that most of the bones don't have to be prepared. They're literally eroding out of the matrix. So when you find a fossil and you have to do a lot of prep, it means tools. And tools can have an impact on the shape of the bone as you prepare it. So they found the pelvis, they found the humerus, radius, all diagnostics to identify the genus. And this may be a new species. And if it is, I'm hoping that there's a very good chance that this new species will be named after the Trask family. I was over on the island this past August and I met up with Pat and Mike on the Trent River on August 23rd, the day of the excavation. So at this point, most of the material that could be removed safely had been removed, but there, were, um, there was a big section that needed to have a plaster cast and then be lowered down. And so up to this point, they'd found some rib bones, some gastroliths. Gastroliths are those um, tummy stones. So they're, um, they're stones that marine reptiles swallow to help grind down the food um, using their belly instead of their teeth. So they had sort of big, big chunky teeth for clawing, but once it got into their belly, they used the stones to break them down further. And he'd found some wrist bones, some finger bones, and part of the back and the pelvis. And possibly um, in this find would be the head, and that would be included in that plaster cast. So the bulk of the specimen was wrapped in plaster very carefully and carefully lowered to the ground by Pat and members of the VIPS, so the Vancouver Island Paleo Society. And Mike was sitting across the river from his chair just watching and calling out safety advice. So we know in that jacket that there's a femur in there and possibly all the bones associated with that. Also included are the fibula and tibia and associated bones that would be with them and perhaps a skull in there as well. So we've not yet um, opened up the plaster cast and prepped out all those pieces, but it's very possible that there is a skull and it would be the skull of not quite a baby, but a diminutive fellow. So he was about four meters long, making him a juvenile of his species. And once he's published, I really hope 
that um, the Pat, uh, the Trask family are honored and um, Pat has a hand in choosing the name and we see perhaps a Traskia Ensis. Anyway, if you want to see a very, oh, it's a poorly done one, but I, I videoed the plaster cast coming down off the cliff with my cell phone and I posted it on Facebook and on my YouTube channel. And you'll excuse me because uh, I'm, I'm junior and I just use a phone to capture these moments, but you can see the moment where it's attached to a safety line and being securely lowered to the ground, which was a very exciting moment in Paleo. Anyway, thanks for coming on this fossil field trip with me and I'll talk to you again soon.